Welcome back to Alliance's Heroes, where heroes in business align. To be part of our super community and find out more about Alliance's, visit www.alliances.com. Now, back to our super host, David Kogan, founder of Alliances. Wow, well, we just had the interview with Tom Dreesen, the guy who toured with Frank Sinatra for over 14 years, the comedian. Later on in the show, we're going to have another comedian, Judy Tenuta. You're going to have to hear her. She's been on every talk show. And later on, we'll be wrapping up the show with Dave Grimm, Vice President of Compliance and Infrastructure at Direct Source Wealth. Well, let's get started with our next hero. You see, one day, you're riding your bicycle on the beach in beautiful California, and you get this incredible idea. Now, everybody comes up with ideas, right? But what do you actually do with that idea? Well, our next hero definitely did something with that idea. Steel Platt, he is the founder of Yard House, and he knows because that's how he started the well-known restaurant. Make sure you follow him on LinkedIn, Steel Platt. Steel, take us back to that bike ride. Now, that famous bike ride that really made you what you are today. Uh, just um, Hi, everybody. Just uh, jumped on a bike one day and just started driving, uh, riding north along the beach and uh, ended up in Long Beach. Uh, it's about a 30-mile ride and just noticed a police sign and a uh, waterfront uh, location located in uh, Shoreline Village. Now, how did it, though, become so successful? I mean, you know, you, 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 what, you came up with the idea of riding a bike. You see an open area and you say, okay, let's go ahead. Let's put Yard House. Uh, well, the idea was kind of created back in Denver in the 80s. I had a bar there called the Boiler Room that opened in like 1989, and I uh, sold that and moved to uh, California in 1991 and started riding my bike a lot and just saw an opportunity for a four leaf sign on, a, on an empty building on the waterfront, which I thought was rather odd and said, uh, so I took an idea that I had in uh, Denver, the Boiler Room, and, and kind of grew on that. Uh, boiler Room had about 20 draft beers in the uh, the first yard house that opened in 1996 in Long Beach uh, had 250 handles on tap. Now, the restaurant business itself is an extremely competitive industry. In fact, a lot of restaurants don't last past, past what, one, two years? I mean, there's a lot of turnover in that. Yeah, the first year is the toughest, definitely. Yeah. But yet, you know, look at how successful and how huge you grew Yard House. What were some of the key components yeah, but- of success of that? Well, I think the first one, uh, obviously, is you have to uh, have a great idea and a niche. And I think a lot of people that get into the business uh, kind of overlap other existing ideas in the same markets and, and fail to execute. So I had my uh, I had my early school days, you know, opening and closing restaurants. So I opened my first one when I was 24, uh, retired at 30, and then I was broke at 30, 31. So uh, riding that bike, I had no money. But I had a good idea. So, and this idea was just to put as many uh, mini draft beers as I could uh, uh, for sale in the in, in the bar. So that's what I did. But it's it's definitely it's definitely the idea to set yourself apart from the others. Now, Steele, you and I share something in common. You see, we both started as busboys. I grew up to be a mm-hmm. radio host and a customer of your restaurants. And you grew up to be on our show, so how we, we definitely have stuff in common, right? In fact, tell me about, um, you know, when do you know to really exit a business? I mean, you went through two exits with Yard House, right? In fact, didn't you ultimately sell to Darden Restaurants for, what, $585 million? Yeah, the, the 585 I was trying to get it to 600 but they were just $15 million short. Uh-huh. But um, uh, the time to sell, I mean, uh, I, I grew from one restaurant. Uh, in 1996 to five yard houses by 2001. Uh, those were all separate entities with different investors. Uh, then we consolidated, uh, and, and we consolidate each separate entity into a single entity. So moving forward and growing would be easier and less moving parts. I had about 110, 120 investors. Uh, by the time we reached 2007, we had about 15, 16 stores open, and I started talking to private equity people roughly in 2005, 2006, 2007, at which time they were looking for cash flow uh, businesses. Uh, we, we finally, I had about three or four uh, businesses courting me, private equity firms, chose the one that 
best fit for Yard House. And we consummated a deal in 2007 in which we sold about half the company for $200 million. Hmm. Uh, but now we have a 800-pound gorilla sitting with us, which was important. I mean, again, we're talking with the founder of Yard House, Steel Platt, ends up selling it to Darden Restaurants for $585 million. And you're listening to me, David Kogan, host of the Alliances Hero Show. Make sure you go to alliances.com. That's E-L-I-A-N-C-E-S.com, the only place where entrepreneurs align. Now, tell me, Steel, too, is how do you, as far as, how do you control so many locations and know what's going on? Because, you know, you had so many locations. You're doing quite a bit of business. What average sales was, what, $8 million, $8.5 million per year per location, something around that. I mean, we're talking about mm-hmm. big numbers here, but it really doesn't matter the size of the fact is to be able to control all that. Well, you uh, that starts with getting good people. So uh, uh, my first big choice, obviously, was a good general manager <clears throat> who turned into kind of a regional manager, director of operations, went out and got a great CFO. And this is all around the second, third store. Uh, the very first general manager ended up being, you know, the president and CEO of the company eventually. So you just grow with your people, but you have to create good systems. And I look at it like kind of uh, operating as a military uh, organization would. So you have your generals out there, lieutenants, your front men, and you just really have to structure. But it's all coming out with a really good system that you can duplicate, can maintain, and then you keep on top of. So we had four-week periods in which we did our P&Ls. And and it's just – and and to put a big umbrella over all that, it's it's called uh, culture and creating – a strong culture amongst everybody that works for your company. So they want to respect you and, and, and want to work there. Well, Steel, we've got about a little less than a minute left. By the way, too, I think you have the coolest name, Steel Platt. I just love that name. It's just it's so cool. It sounds so tough, <laughs> it's too. It's a family name, yeah. Oh, I, I, you know, we have got a lot of, you know, children that, uh, well, I say children, you know, they're 16 right now, right? Maybe they're working in restaurants and that. They're not quite sure maybe where they want to go and that. You stuck with it, and look what happened. What kind of advice can you share? Again, we've got a little, a little less than a minute left. Can you share with, you know, uh, ones that are starting off in their career? And what I mean starting off is, you know, 15, 16 years old, getting their first job to really form to where they can go and do the best they can. Well, I, I knew at 16 that I wanted to open a restaurant. And then I picked a college uh, that kind of uh, helped me do that. I went to University of Denver Hotel Restaurant School. Uh, and then got my first job, I think, uh, when I graduated in 1982. I think my first job was $17,000 a year, but it was in Maui, so that made up the difference. And then I just uh, didn't like working for other people, and, and I went back to waiting tables, uh, moved back to Denver, and just started writing a business plan of the idea that I had. My first idea was, like, blocks of stir-fried vegetables and proteins and Eventually, I opened my first restaurant that was 5,000 square feet in 1985 in downtown Denver. Uh, and that was the start. But uh, I went from waiter to a uh, restaurant owner. I've never actually technically been a restaurant manager. So I'm more of an idea concept people, and I like to find good people. You can always find good people to kind of pursue any good idea. So uh, ideas, I think, are the biggest, biggest part of it. If you have a great idea, a good niche that sets you apart from the competition, then uh, I think success is uh, ahead of you and you just have to stay stay on the track and don't give up and be ready to jump a lot of hurdles well definitely steel you stayed on track bus boy to restaurant mogul you brought so many great restaurants and bars to fruition and have entertained so many with your work you're a hero steel platt founder of yar house follow him on linkedin steel platt of course will also have the link on alliances.com E-L-I-A-N-C-E-S dot com. David Kogan.